What is going on people? Today we're going to go ahead and talk about formations and specifically failings and wedges and uh, how to best use them because I know that a lot of people are trained into thinking if you're sending a blast, range blast, cavalry blast, whatever it is, you want to have your troops in the back and then your fluff troops in the front and that's the way that you always would send it but there are a lot of different occasions where that's not the best way to go about it so we're going to go ahead and talk about that in a bit. Uh, now this uh this video is probably going to spend most of the video here explaining this so uh, just warning you i actually did also make it to where you can see my cursor on the screen that way it makes it a little bit easier to point things out and i do have some pictures to mirror this as well make it make it a little a little bit easier to understand right so like i mentioned before right a lot of people are trained that if you're sending a blast if you're if it's like a range blast you want your range in the back uh, if it's a cavalry blast, you want your cavalry in the back like this. But there, there is a lot of circumstances where that's actually not the best idea that you can go with. And the reason for that being is that let's let's say that you are going to be uh, sending a, a range blast. Let's let's go with a range blast because the infantry uh, phalanx that we have here is what would counter that, right? So with a range blast, like I said, a lot of people are trained to have range blast. All the range troops in the back and then the fluff troops in the front and that's going to act as a, like an initial shield and which is true but here's where that kind of falls right if you go in an infantry phalanx you're going to have your range in a line in the back and that's great it's in the back but here's what ends up happening when you do get countered if you're running into an infantry phalanx like this right and let me let me see if i can get it a little closer let's let's go like this What's going to happen is, after your fluff troops die, you know, the first couple of seconds in the battle, what's going to happen is your range is going to lock into their infantry. So this range squad is going to lock into that infantry squad right here. And as a matter of fact, let me see if I can make it a little closer. That way I can point it out a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. So this range squad right here is going to go into this range or infantry squad. This range is going to go into this infantry and then so on and so forth, right? So your four squads of range are essentially going to be battling four squads of infantry. That's what you would call a full counter, right? So that's not really the greatest thing. Now, if you put them in the back like this and you know you're going to be hitting cavalry, then that's fine. That works just as well. But whenever it is that you may be getting countered, and let's say you're sending a, a range blast into like an infantry phalanx that counters you. The best way to go about it is actually going with a wedge. And specifically what you want to go is with an infantry wedge. Now I'm going to go ahead and explain to you why that is. Some of you may be thinking, well, my range isn't in the back. So what exactly is the point of all of that? Well, here's the way that this would work, right? So with this infantry wedge range blast into this uh, infantry what's gonna happen is now you have your range grouped into two so you have the range up here which is two squads and then you have the range in the bottom which is another two squads if you guys don't know exactly how squads work essentially whenever you're sending a blast or just any march in general right but let's let's keep it simple let's say you're sending a blast of four million into a fort let's say right and it's a range blast well the way that these squads are going to be separated in all of your range troops are going to be separated into four so a four million blast each one of these squads is going to be representing one million troops that's how it's broken down um so essentially the way that this is going to work now is that these two range squads right here are going to attack this one infantry squad together so these two will attack this one right here in in the side the one in the middle is going to be completely ignored right Coincidentally, the one on the top, the two range squads, are going to be attacking the one infantry on the side here. And then the one in the middle is going to be completely ignored. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the point of that? The reason you want to do that instead of something like this is because in order for your range to actually get through the infantry and into the cavalry or whatever it may be, they need to be able to wipe out that squad. And because it's going to be a counter, you're going to be having a little bit more difficulty than any other. So instead of going with this, where it's just one squad attacking one squad like this, this one will attack this one, this one will attack this one, etc. That means that your range will never move on from the infantry until all the infantry is wiped out. And obviously, that's not very good, is it? 
but by going this way you're essentially doubling the attack power that you have into one of the infantry squads like this so these two into this one these two into this one and let's say the enemy has i don't know two million infantry troops right so instead of having to go through the two million infantry before getting to the cavalry in this instance you only got to go through half which would be one million uh and so you are going to be using these two squads to try to take out this one squad and then these two squads to take out this one squad and when that happens when the squad is taken down what happens is there's retargeting and so because you took out the side ones guess what's going to happen these cavalry um squads right here are going to be moving up and attacking your range and these cavalry squads over here are going to be moving up and attacking your range and guess what when your range finishes off the infantry that's on the side, they're going to retarget into, you got it, the cavalry, which is essentially what you want. And so that's why having wedges and, and knowing when to attack with wedges is very important. It's the same with like, uh, let's say you're sending a cavalry blast and uh, you're going up against a, a range uh, uh, phalanx. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to be using the two cavalry squads to try to take out one range squad. And then the two cavalry squads to take out one range squad. And guess what happens? The infantry and the cavalry are going to be running up uh, to attack your cavalry when that happens. And when the retargets happens, you're going to be targeting infantry or cavalry. Which is going to be much better than having your cavalry attack only range throughout the battle. So... This is why wedges is very important, especially for ranged and cavalry, because if you put them in the back like this, if you run into your counter, then you're just countered. You're, you're going to be there stuck attacking your counter until you can clear all of them or if you can even clear all of them. So that's why it's not very advisable if you're going in blind or if, if a target is online for you to use a phalanx with the blast troops in the back because you're more than likely just going to counter yourself and not give you a best chance. But if you go with a wedge, at least you only have to go through half of the counter that's there, right? Now, the last thing I want to point out is that this is also why you don't see that, uh, that that same logic applied to infantry. Because with infantry, it's a little bit different. Remember that range, like for instance, this range phalanx, even though range is the front line, most of the time when the battle starts, range is actually not going to move. And the infantry or the cavalry are going to move up in front of the range. So whenever you're attacking with an infantry uh, blast, right? You might think, well, just go cavalry wedge, put the infantry on the side, and you're good to go. Unfortunately, that does not work the same with infantry because, remember, what makes these work is that the units that you're going to be attacking or you want to attack, they're going to be moving up. While the infantry, when you use the infantry on the side and you're not going to be hitting ranged, the infantry, whenever they're done attacking, whether it's infantry or cavalry, they're not just going to randomly go attack the troop that's all the way in the back in the range. No, they're going to retarget to another infantry squad or a cavalry squad because while the battle is going on, those troops are going to be moving up in front of the range. And that's why infantry and that logic doesn't really apply here. And that's why with infantry rallies, generally you want to go infantry phalanx and put them all the way in the front because if you don't hit range with an infantry blast, you're never going to hit ranged. There is no way to like, oh, just target the two cavalry on the sides and then the range are, are not going to be in range for you to actually retarget to the range because they're going to be staying in the back. So that's why infantry is, be is best kept up front because if you hit range, that's great. If you don't, you're not really going to hit range regardless unless they just don't have like a lot of troops and you wipe out the infantry and cav and then get to the range. So that's why with infantry, it's a little bit different. Um, and I also have seen people put like infantry blasts with the infantry in the back and then the fluff troops in the front. And while yes, that, that could be beneficial in a way, remember that infantry troops are some of the slower moving troops. So putting them all the way in the back at the start of the battle might actually cause you to take more damage than actually putting them in the front. Because if you put them in the front, they're going to be in the battle right away. Whereas if they're in the back, your fluff troops gets taken out and then the infantry is still just kind of lagging behind trying to 
and then what 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 did the fluff actually do for you so generally speaking if you're going to be doing a cavalry blast or a range blast and you don't know if you're going to be countered or you might be countered i would suggest going with the wedges that would put them in the side um i would only suggest you put them in the back like this in a row if you know 100 percent that you're going to be attacking whatever troop they uh, they actually counter um and then for infantry just Go infantry phalanx almost 100% of the time, just because if you don't get to touch the range at the start, you probably never will. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was helpful. I, I talked about this today because, like I said, uh, I've been seeing a lot of, like, guild showdown lineups. And I always wonder, like, what people are doing with the way that they're setting it up. And I figured that it was time to talk about formations and the best formations to use, etc. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was uh, helpful to you guys and uh, explained a bit as to why you should or shouldn't use phalanxes and wedges in some circumstances. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys for coming through. And until later, bye.